Barry, what are we doing up here? <laughs> well, I wanted you to experience the wilderness. We read in Mark 1, immediately after the baptism of Jesus, it says, The Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness, and he was in the wilderness 40 days, being tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild animals, and the angels were ministering to him. Now we're in the wilderness of Judea. This is exactly the type of place where Jesus would have been when this event happened. And of course, uh, today, the day we went, is tremendously hot. I think it was probably near 100 degrees. Even right now, I can feel the heat radiating through the soles of my shoes, burning and scalding them. I just hide it really well. <laughs> being out here and seeing this, I can really imagine Jesus being in this space for 40 days, the sun beating down on him, no food, no water, and during that period of time, Satan is tempting him, trying to get him to take shortcuts, trying to give him ways out of fulfilling his purpose for coming to earth. One of the things he tempts him with is, you've been without food for so long. Turn some of these stones into bread. Right, and as you can see, there are plenty of stones around here to do that. There are, and for Jesus to be offered that shortcut, you know, you don't have to get back to civilization. You don't have to get back to people. You can satisfy your hunger right here. The Bible describes Satan as cunning and he uses opportune moments to tempt us. And he obviously did that in this instance. Jesus was hot, he was thirsty, he was hungry, he was alone, and for 40 days, Jesus is being tempted by Satan. And so it was just, it was wise on Satan's part, it was crafty on Satan's part, but Jesus didn't give in. Well, not only was Jesus out there for 40 days, but he was out there also for 40 nights too. During the time Jesus lived, it would have been complete darkness with the exception of the moon and stars. And to be out there alone, I think, during that time, and to be considering all the things that not only the devil was tempting him with, but just the, the environment itself would have been very difficult to handle. I know growing up, I had a misconception of what the word wilderness means. I always thought it was dry and arid like it is here, but I always thought it was flat, sandy, yeah. like kind of like a desert back in the United States, but it's really not. It's mountainous. It's actually really beautiful, but it's completely different than what you normally have in your mind. Well, and it mentions there were animals. I mean, we've seen some of those since being here. Being in this space helps us visualize that, absolutely. I really appreciate you taking me. Glad to. I think one of the things that biblical students need to connect, a couple of dots they need to connect when they think about the temptation of Jesus, is that Jesus came to fulfill all righteousness. And so just like Jesus was 40 days in the wilderness, the children of Israel had been 40 years in the wilderness and had consistently fallen short of God's standards and expectations and desires. And so Jesus comes and as he perfects all righteousness, he goes through this 40 day, this, this shortened version of being in the wilderness, and he does it perfectly. He never once gives in, he never once fails God, and it is one of the events that helps demonstrate that he's able to be our sinless sacrifice. I'm Craig. And I'm Stu, and we're the founders of Appian Media. We really hope that you've enjoyed the content that you've just seen. This was only made available through the generous donations of so many of you. We believe that the world should have biblically accurate, visually engaging content about the Bible, and it should be free for everyone. We would encourage you to visit the membership page of appianmedia.org and consider becoming a reoccurring member. Everything that you donate to Appian Media is tax deductible. However you decide to donate, we really appreciate your support.